Hey guys, it's CL, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I make brand new Critical Role recaps every Saturday at noon, and would be happy to have you join the party. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, and hit the Bertrand bell to be notified of future videos. Now, without further ado, let's discuss the 20th episode of Campaign 3 of Critical Role. The episode begins right where we left off at the end of last week. Bell's Hells and the Verdict separate and attempt to break their way into Hydroga's fancy museum. Chetney manages to sneak his way up the rival team's rope after he takes advantage of Ashton fucking with them, and he turns invisible, the rest of the Hells breaking through a set of bars and glass to get inside the lower level. With Hydroga's museum, it is very evident he's obsessed with himself. Portraits and busts of him litter the inside confines of the building, and the pair of teams race to find the mysterious item, Wind Folly. FCG uses their absolutely clutch Find Object spell, which leads them to find the path downstairs. This is exactly what this spell was made for, and it's super cool to see it in action. Chetney, separate from the group, watches the opposite party in interest while Fern and Orem do a little fuckery of their own, setting up booby traps and stealing salt and pepper shakers. I get it, Fern. I have a pair of salt and pepper shakers from Target that are dachshunds wearing holiday sweaters, and they mean a lot to me, so I get your feelings. The party rejoin together as they proceed into the labyrinth of a downstairs the museum holds, which makes sense. Anytime I go to a museum and see the same flippin' blue walls and white archways, I'd have a hard time getting out too. But after narrowly avoiding some traps and falling, <laughs> pun intended, for some others, our heroes encounter the majority of the other team having been taken by a sleep spell or something similar, as they seem to have messed with one of the museum's special artifacts. These items cracked my shit. All of them sporting some sort of paragraph with try-hard phrasing and theorizing, not to mention the constant use of ellipses. They were so entertaining. But some were actually quite interesting. There was a headdress of a cult priest of Hishari, a strange mask that has ties to the mysterious and odd deaths of a family of individuals, the mast of a ship sporting a warrior apparently calling the spirits back home, at least that's what I think I heard. A journal holding the secrets and revelations of Vincere Chloris pronunciation, I don't know. There's also a weapon called the Spear of Judgment. And most interestingly, potentially the destroyed remnants of a Jorhasian beacon. What would one of the beacons be doing here in Ankarel? I mean... In Campaign 2, it is said that they were gifts from God, and some were found through excavations. But what happened to this beacon? Was its energy maybe rehoused in one of the many ones that the Mighty Nine came into contact with five years ago? Or is this another moat out in the wild for someone to reap the benefits of? Maybe the Bright Queen's beacon was stolen once again. I want to know your guys' theories on this. Like, how do you destroy a beacon? I don't know why, but in my head I'd equate it to like a nuclear blast, so I'm not exactly sure that's it. Chetney comes close to going feral in his werewolf form after getting stuck in a quicksand trap, which held bones by the way, despite clear warnings that they wouldn't be seriously harmed. Bell's Hells also fight a group of marionettes that, holy shit, I could have lived my whole life without the creepy ushering forward jump scare Matt did. I think Ashley's choice of having Fern use the Entangle spell to try and intertwine the strings was such a cool touch. And I also especially liked that bout of combat because Sashimi got some screen time. After a few more narrow traps, the party finally come to the room that holds Wind Folly. Encased in glass, our heroes try to break the item free from its holding but instead trigger two clay golems that are going to clap their cheeks. I'm a little worried, guys. Two of their three melee heavy hitters are very low in health, and a lot of their casters are down to their very last spells. Hopefully the golems don't hit too hard, or maybe the Verdict, who are hot on their trail, will come and at least try to bail them out, maybe. 
This campaign feels like it's flying by. I can't believe Bell's Hells have leveled up as far as they have. And I can't believe we're already at episode 20. I'm loving it so far. Just like how I'm loving that Matt and Marisha were wearing the same Final Girl t-shirt in this episode. Also, it's okay, Liam. I feel like you're someone who usually rolls pretty well. And after Marisha had the hard time a few weeks ago, I think it was someone else's turn. Or maybe you're just too close to Laura's horde of dice jailed clicky clackies and it's rubbing off on you. Speaking of Laura, her hair has finally told us that they film these episodes a week in advance. I'm a little surprised they aren't too far forward in producing these because I can't tell you how nice it is to have a little buffer of videos prepared in case like life happens and you don't want YouTube to bend you over. Let me know what you guys think about Campaign 3 and this potential Mighty Nine connection. Is the beacon still out and about? Or is it just a relic from the ancient past, long and destroyed? Please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Also check out a pilot podcast where my friends and I review TV shows and film every Monday. I have an album called Scorpio out now as well and hope you'll check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there. Good day, my friends. Tell me I'm out of my mind Tell me I'm just overreacting These little things, what is it?